Okay, thank you, Christine. Mm -hmm. So um, I welcome you all tonight. I'm Sarah Rubel. You may not have heard of me. And uh, if that's the case, I just wanna introduce myself a little bit. I'm from Ohio as is Christine. Um, I am Scott's mom and Scott uh, transitioned in 1994. So we're at almost 28 years, which is pretty remarkable for me to even imagine. Uh, and yet I have been learning something from day one up until today as well. So the, the learning continues, the, the growth, the awareness for me has been um, continuous. It wasn't easy in the early days because there wasn't much around for me to use, to utilize, to read, to connect with others, but um, still I was on a soul journey that was taking me where I needed to go. And um, I have a really incredible relationship with Scott. Uh, and that comes through in everything that I write or speak about. And I know that he's present here already as, as well as our children, all of your children. So, but he's very much present in all that I do. So I do channel him. And uh, he told me to, he would take care of the meeting in a lot of ways tonight. So I'm trusting that as well. So the title of this soul planning and it's really, we're living between two worlds. And I'm sure so many of you are feeling that, but there's so much that goes into where is that place that's between two worlds? You're still so in the human body. You know, our children are in spirit. They're sending messages or you have heard from a medium where they are and that they're okay because they are so okay. And yet, how do we feel more comfortable living in that place between two worlds? There's that space almost between us that we want to bridge. And I feel the soul planning, uh, which I'll explain soul planning, but the soul planning is that bridge that brings us together as souls. And in this whole knowing that I've been taught and uh, been brought to as something that I needed to experience living it and then teaching it, has shown me such peace of mind. And so I, I often say that it's, this has been one of the greatest um, um, healing tools that I've had is the soul planning, understanding it and living within it. And um, I want to just share that with you in ways that will hopefully bring you closer to that uh, place of knowing where your child is and knowing more about this relationship that we have. And, if you've had readings, then you know your child is out there. That is amazing. And you will continue to feel that validation. But you have to also remember that this journey that we're on is for us as well as parents. And we have so planned this with our child to come into this lifetime with all that we are working on. They know what we need. There's no doubt in my mind. Scott has shown me this so many times. He knows where I am, what I'm doing, and what I need to do. And what I need to see or hear. So I know that's not just for me. I'm not the only one as a mom that's experiencing that. Moms and dads, siblings as well, grandparents can as well. So soul planning means, well, this is the explanation that we're going to get. Before we're even born, we come into this, into a, a space and spirit with our soul family, with those that we're going to be interacting with in this lifetime. And we are very aware. Spirit is not like us at all. They see the whole big picture. So coming into this lifetime and planning it, there's already a knowing of what we need to do and what we need to see or what we need to learn from, from each other on our own individual journeys and how we can um, grow throughout this lifetime in ways that we never could have. You know, maybe let's say our last lifetime was in the early 1900s. Well, look at here, now we're in 2022. And it's such a different time. And there's so much more to experience than there was in 1900, a whole different time and a whole different era. And so when you think about all the lifetimes, I don't know how many I've had, let's say I've had a thousand. Um, you think of all those lifetimes since the beginning of time. And imagine that for you too that in those lifetimes, there were different things going on. There were wars going on then. There's always been war. There's always been fighting. There's always been contrast. Spirit works in contrast in so many ways. So we come into this lifetime with our children. They, we know before we're even coming into the body what we need and what we will 
achieve by the time our life is complete. And I will talk about exit points at some point, but I have been told and I believe that when we leave our body, that was the time we were always meant to go. It wasn't another time, it wasn't a mistake, it wasn't an accident. It was the time that, that each of us had completed our life, our children included. So when we leave, we will complete everything we came here to do and we will have completed our soul plan. That plan that we planned could have been 100 or 50 years ago with our loved ones in spirit and friends to come into this lifetime to be having a much more organized, let's say, which doesn't feel organized, a much more fulfilled in some ways lifetime, a much more confusing time. But eventually in time, you get to a place of understanding more and more just by going through each day. If you're here today, there's no doubt in my mind that you are working very hard to understand this experience that you're going through, you know, where your child is, what all this means, and what you are going to be able to carry out of this meeting tonight. And each meeting you go to, into the spiritual tools, Donna, you're a part of that, that you, that you are um, working on individually with others, whoever you're hanging out with, whoever is in your family, whoever you interact with, always was meant to be. So I look at every single thing that I go through in my life now, the people that I meet, the experiences that I have, and I want you to write this down somewhere or just burn it into your brain. Everything has meaning. I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna use that word reason because sometimes then we have to search for that reason. What happened with you and your child or your children has meaning for you and for them. They already can see it because the minute they left their body, they knew back to spirit that they had completed what they came here to do. And they knew that they were going to continue to help us in ways that they could or that we planned absolutely the way that we planned before we were born. They know it all has meaning. They can look back on their lives and see how much meaning came out of it. Even if they were a three-year-old or a three-month-old, there was still meaning to every one of those days that they were in a human body. So first off, what I want you to really remember is it all has meaning. And in time, those questions that you have will be answered, some little bits and pieces, and then you'll put it together because we're always connecting the dots, aren't we? this class to that class, to this piece of information, to that new awareness, to that dream, connecting the dots and trying to make it all make sense for us. Just trust it has meaning and you don't have to make sense of it all right now. Allow the dots to be connected. That's what your soul plan is doing. Bringing in more pieces all the time, more people to give you a different piece, another view of something, another way of looking at it. So, when we are in spirit and we are soul, and I wanna read you some different thoughts that people have on soul. And I also, I get all my information from spirit. So um, as mediums do as well, um, I'm not a certified medium with, medium with HPH, but I have my own abilities. And uh, I, learning, learning how, I've learned how to trust them and live my life within that knowing. So as a soul, our children are soul and we have a soul. So there is, that's why this is all called soul planning. So we came into this life with a birth, a pre-birth plan, the soul plan. So I wanna read, um, I have to say that Oprah was my teacher in the 90s and early 2000s because there were no other teachers really going into all of this spirituality or soul work. And she had amazing um, guests on her show that I just would soak in what they said and helped me so much. So I have something here that she, I, I printed up years ago, but it is different, different descriptions that different guests on her show gave her. Um, Gary Zukov is one. I don't know if you've heard of him. He is a, an author. He's, um, he kind of was quiet for a while. He's back on YouTube. And I'm gonna read what his view of what the soul was to give you an impression of what the experts are saying about what our soul is because your child's a soul, we're a soul, each of us is a soul that's on this earth right now. Gary Zukov says, the soul is that part of you that existed before you were born and that will exist after you die. 
It's the highest, most noble part of yourself that you can reach for. It exists no matter what we're going through or how you feel today. That's part of us that is all knowing, is that soul part of us. Another one, Deepak Chopra. The soul is the core of your being. It doesn't exist in space and time. It's a field of infinite possibilities, infinite creativity. It's your internal reference point with which you should always be in touch. So we don't know always, we know the human part, but the soul is existing within all that we're doing. So know that. It's always the reference point. Sometimes you may feel that. Um, you, it just seems like it, it's like one of those things that resonates so strongly with you, something you heard or you felt. I always say that that's your soul taking that in and you're feeling it if it resonates. And I love that word. So um, another one, Debbie Ford. To me, the soul is a part of us that never dies. We know our children haven't died. They transitioned, right? It's who we are at our core. And it carries all the messages and lessons that we've learned in the past and will carry all into the lessons and the messages that we will carry into the future. So it is one of those things that I just want you to feel the depth of that soul and that you've come here with your child on a soul planned journey. It's that deep. Michael Singer, another author, the indwelling consciousness that watches the mind come and go, that watches the heart come and go, the emotions of the heart and watches the world pass before you. You are the conscious, the consciousness, the center of being, which is the soul. So I wanted to also give you an idea of what, um, how we differentiate between soul and spirit. Those are used interchangeably sometimes, the soul carries all the lifetimes we've ever had. It knows where we've been and what we've done. So if you have a deja vu moment, it's like, whoa, where did that come from? Somebody might be in Italy and they recognize something. Maybe they grew up in Italy in another lifetime, but you feel that moment, deja vu moment. So that's the soul bringing that up and going, ding, 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 we've been here before. Or something that you realize that you hadn't known before comes to you and it just feels so right. The spirit is, it's got kind of two ways of looking at it. Spirit is like where all is, where our kids, I would say they're in spirit, okay? The spirit is where our, it's, it's who we are in this lifetime. My spirit is Sarah in this lifetime. Scott, my son, his spirit in this lifetime was Scott. So when we worry about, will I, will I see my child again? Will they recognize me? Those spirits that we have all been always remain in spirit. They're always there and accessible. So your child, I don't even know, Scott has not gone into another lifetime as far as I know, but if he did, it would not take away from the fact that he would still be available to me. His spirit will still be present with me always in this lifetime. If he's present with me, then your child, your children are present with you as well. So we, ex we expand the view of what spirit is or the soul is to take it into um, the, the, the brilliance, the bigness, the um, awareness that it all is. And I hope that helps you see a little bit more when we talk about soul planning, it's done on a, a level that we aren't always gonna understand or see but we are being taken places we never thought we could go. And then there's also past lives that can come into all of this as well, which means every past life that, the life that we've ever had is carried in our soul. And that could be accessed as well. So, you know, I don't want to complicate or confuse you with this, but if I say something about a past life, I want you to know that that is carried within us as well. There's a lot that's around, that's within us that we only know is human. And there were some words that um, this French philosopher who I think died in 1955, um, what is his name here? Let me get it. Yeah, I'm not getting it. Um, 
Yes, Pierre T. Okay, it's French. Pierre Tillard de Chardin lived in eight, from 1881 to 1955. And his words that I, I learned early on, a, fr a friend even sent this information to me, that says, I'm not a human being having a spiritual experience. I'm a spiritual being having a human experience. Have you heard that before? Have you heard those words before? I, I carry those with me all the time. I'm not a human being. It allows us to grow into this spiritual part of the, who we are. I'm not a human being having an occasional spiritual experience. I am a spiritual being at the core of it all, having human experiences. And so that's how we connect with our children. They're in a spiritual place and we truly are a spiritual being as well. So I don't know if anybody has any questions on what I've already brought forth. Um, you know, I don't want to confuse anybody. Uh, so I don't know if Christine, if there are any questions on that yet, because I certainly want to clear that up before I move on. Yes, we do have um, one question uh, that came in uh, a bit ago uh, from Sab Sabina Chowdhury. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm sorry. Um, the question is, have been told by whom souls after they passed, if that's the case, there's no free will. So it sounds like a question in regard to free will. Yes. Um, this, I probably, I'm disagreeing with a lot of people that you talk to or hear, but I, I totally get 100% that we do not have free will. Um, I'll explain that in a way that I'm living that myself. I know that the choices that I'm making, whether I have a Diet Coke, which I, said, I say in my mind, you don't need another Diet Coke. It's like, have a Diet Coke. And so um, even that kind of thing, I feel that I'm being guided. It's okay to do that, mom, or it's okay you know, to do that. So I look at everything that I'm going through in my life now as me not having free will, but me being guided and taken where I need to go, even this class, uh, to... Um, you know, I'm not going to the conference. I'm not speaking at the conference because my husband has a couple of issues, cancer, some cancer, and also memory issues now. And I don't feel like I could leave him alone for my, uh, you know, my delight, my, my desire to present this, this course, this uh, soul planning, you know, in helping parents heal in August. Um, but I also know this is all soul planned for him and for us. And I know that when I made the decision to not go to the conference and told Irene all this too, was that um, I know this was so planned. And so I trust where I'm going and what I'm doing and what I'm needing to learn and things that I'm letting go of. So when I look at free will, I'm okay without any free will. I'm trusting where I need to be and what I need to do and where I need to go. And I'm being guided by my son. No doubt you're being guided by your children in ways that you don't even know yet. I had to learn this. I had to work into this, learn it, grow into it as well. So the decisions that you're making to come to this class tonight, to take whatever class you might take, to take a trip, um, all of that is a part of seemingly, seemingly your free will. What if you were meant to be there? You know, what if, every decision you've ever made that you thought was your free will that, you know, as humans, as Americans, especially, we love thinking we have free will. It gives us power, it gives us control. But if you're on a soul journey and you're a spiritual being having human experiences, are you able to say, well, maybe I don't need free will. Maybe I can just trust this journey in ways I've never done before. Um, Scott gave me those words years ago, trust the journey. I keep saying it everywhere I go because I've watched my journey of ex exploration and discovery and growth and teaching, all of these things come, I never would have dreamt I'd be doing this in front of you today. And yet here I am, because I was open to whatever I was meant to um, do in this lifetime. So free will, what I get from spirit is that if it feels like free will, that's fine. But ultimately, it was always meant to be. And so if it was your choice seemingly, or if it was spirit taking you there for on your soul plan, it came down to the same exact thing. So it depends on how you want to view it. If it feels uncomfortable, 
to, um, to let go of that free will. Just take in what I'm saying today and kind of feel it. And if it feels right, then kind of test it out or just feel like, am I tr can I just trust what I'm gonna to do today? Or what I'm going to, who I'm going to call today, or who's gonna to call me? Or what I'm going to learn, or what I'm even going to eat? Um, it is, the free will is really, as George, George, a, George A maybe said, I understand free will is primarily employed by our higher self in another dimension. It is coming from our soul plan, yes, and it is being shown to us in our human body. And therefore we are still following our soul plan, even if we feel it's using our soul, our free will. Does that make sense? Our free will. Um, each of us will come to that in a, in a different way, but it's, um, it's the explanation that I have, but it's also the life that I'm living now. I feel very comfortable with no free will. Um, I'm following the journey I came here for. So, um, so I want to just explain the, the soul planning that when you come into this lifetime and you're able to, um, you know, know so many of you, I hope that you're, someone has their, yeah, somebody, Pamela, could you mute? Please. Um, Someone you, just joined and they are um, oh. not muted. Let me see if I can find who that is and I will go ahead and mute them, Sarah. Okay, thank you. So when we are um, going through each day and you can try and utilize a soul plan that is taking you places you need to go, are you able to just live a normal life and just go through every day? Yeah, you are. Because every day when you get up, something new is going to come perhaps, or you're going to feel something different. Um, I totally believe that everyone that got COVID was going to get COVID on their soul plan because there were too many experiences connected to it, right? So all those experiences could not just have come out of thin air. Think about if someone actually passed away, transitioned from COVID their life would have been complete after that point. So their life or their COVID experience also affected their family, the healthcare workers, anybody, family, friends, anyone that was around them, anyone that was taking care of them. All of that came into soul plans from all these different angles for that one person. So I look at COVID. I look at those kinds of things as being soul planned. Um, I even look at what's going on in Ukraine I don't have all the answers to that as being something so big and so hard to look at and to understand. But think of all the human experiences that are going on there. What are we learning from the people of Ukraine? What are we learning by witnessing something up close and personal like we are with that? That is something that um, we never wanted to, you know, but it is, it is in the reality of life. And I know that our children are uh, very much aware of all of this. And they know if you need to turn the TV on with this and then you do, or you watch it, they're going to be a part of everything that you're doing. I hope that you begin to feel that in ways. And if not, just trust me in some way that you are never alone. You are never alone. You know, when you talk to them, you know, if you ask for signs, that kind of thing, that they are present with you. So those, those, uh, humans, spirits that got COVID, they were never alone in the hospital. Do you understand when it, when COVID was shutting everything down and families could not go to see their loved ones, they were never alone. And I know you're never alone either. Our children are very, very aware. They're going to be quiet at times. Oh, believe me, I know that because I didn't have access to Zoom or really even the internet when Scott transitioned. I had books and a few people. And um, yet I just knew he was still there. He kept giving me messages. And he's taught me, you know, to trust in a way that I never thought that I could. And so trusting the journey, trusting, you know, what's happening in Ukraine, what are all these people learning? And what are we learning from them? And how are we witnessing this? And what ultimately will, will we be shown? But I, I, I found a quote the other day that just really brought this to me, that it says, we live our lives forward and then we understand them backward. 
We live our lives forward and we understand them backward. Do you see that? What we're living now, we won't really be able to understand thoroughly or more fully until we're able to look back on it. And we see what we grew from that, how we grew from that, or what we learned from it, or what we let go of, something that you know we need to let go of that's not really helping us anymore, that we move into our greater awareness, which is really what we're all intended to do, is to grow into who we became, who we're becoming every day. Our children, they found that 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 what they learned that immediately when they left. They had completed everything they came here for. We can't understand that, right? We cannot understand how they could, their lives could have been complete. They know it now. They came for everything they came here for. They came to be with you, with your family, with friends, with the experiences that they had. And then so planned, it was never intended to be the lifetime, the full lifetime that we all imagined our kids would have. Why? Because we're working on two different levels. And so when I say, you know, we're living between two worlds, we're trying to take all of our human awareness and fit it into something that works connecting with our children and understand what spirit or heaven or whatever you want to call it is, is showing us. How do we blend that? How do we bring that together? If you just say to yourself for a while, those words, I'm living between two worlds. And the first time I ever heard that, I was at a conference years ago, and it just stayed with me because that's how I felt. I couldn't find Scott who's out there in that other world, but we have bridged that gap. You're bridging it every time you connect with them, every time that you're talking with them, every time you hear a song from them. They're doing their part, you're doing their part. You're bridging that gap that feels so wide, I know. And that's all so planned. It was all intended for that to come to be. And I can look back on 27 years of what I didn't know and what I've been shown. And someday you too will look back and go, I could never have imagined all of this being shown to me through the passing, the death, the transitioning of my beloved child or children. Give it time. You have to give it time. And the soul will carry you where you need to be to every Every talk that you go to, every medium that you go to, every book that you read, it will bring you, it will bridge that gap that you feel between your child being in spirit. And I hope that that closes the gap a little bit more when I said that you're a spiritual being having human experiences. We need to expand our thinking, right? Isn't that what everyone's telling us? I mean, Suzanne does that. I mean, the the people that you're talking to, I, I watched Evan Alexander's um, podcast or his video on YouTube today. We're all expanding. Look what he went through. He was in a coma. What did he know? He was a neurologist. And how did he expand in ways he never could have imagined? Because that was his journey. It was already planned. The steps were laid out for him to take those steps beyond being a neurologist and helping us and showing us more. So we've each been brought into this in in a way that we didn't want to be here. And yet when you embrace the, embrace it, embrace this experience in a way that, you know, we have to fight it because it's too big sometimes to even know what to do with it. But all these tools that you're gathering up, all these pieces and parts, you know, each um, new expression that you learn It's another part of what you've needed to take in from your soul plan to be able to move forward uh, in ways that you will. So if you don't feel like someone, I'll go to another place here, but if you feel like your family isn't understanding you or friends aren't understanding you or not hanging around with you, what I've had to do, what I've had to learn is that those people that are meant to be in my life right now are there. And those that can't understand me or didn't understand me in the past, even though I would try to explain, there was something in them that was never going to meet me where I was. And as much as I would miss that relationship, it's not like I had to end it. Sometimes it just filtered away. 
And sometimes we try and explain to someone what we're feeling, but if they're not meant to learn about soul, not soul planning, but if they're not meant to learn about spirituality or the signs and understand them, or for you, what you believe so deeply and feel now, if someone that can't understand that, I give them a pass in a way because what I know is they didn't come here for that. They were not going to be plugged into it as we are. And even though we are trying to explain it to them and they might react in a negative way or ignoring or whatever it may be or try and talk you out of it, follow your journey, trust your journey and what you know and allow the, the knowing that you have that just lives within you, that this doesn't feel like a safe relationship or a healthy one, to know that allow them to just to be. And I tell people this often, my older brother, who I dearly love, you know what, I would tell him about signs, which nobody was talking about back in the time, but I knew I was getting signs from Scott and I was getting, I would see orbs on pictures and that kind of thing. And I would share them with my three siblings, two brothers and a sister. But my oldest brother was always the one that would say, it was spots on your camera, you know, it's not bad, it can't be that, it's never, you know. So this went on for a number of years and I had to learn, I, I just loved my brother so much. And I had to just accept the fact that this wasn't going to be his thing. And so, you know, when I would be with him, I might insert something to see, is he ready yet? And yet we have had a very loving relationship for these 27 years through all this with me talking with my other brother and sister for all together about it, but my brother not really reacting in a, in a way that was you know detrimental to our relationship. But unbelievably, um, he sent me a message maybe two months ago and said, watch channel eight news. They have a story on there that I think you're gonna like. And it's like, yes, <laughs> he's getting it in little pieces and parts and I didn't have to shove it down his throat or you know, find a way for him to get it, to see um, what I'm feeling, or what I'm living now you know, with Scott um, in spirit. So we begin to see the soul plan did not, his soul plan wasn't exactly what my soul planning was teaching me. Um, I wanted him in my life. He was meant to remain as always because he's loved me well as well to know that it wasn't always going to be the same. So trust your soul plan and what somebody else's soul plan has on it. Allow them to be where they are sometimes too. Sometimes it's hard with family or those people that are pretty uh, uh, strong in their views and just let them be. Kind of release them to themselves and know that you're gonna find plenty of people on Helping Parents Heal and in other groups or just new friends that are gonna be very willing to share with you, to um, that resonate with you and that you can share those kinds of experiences with. So on this soul plan, if you when you start to see yourself as a spirit um, interacting with other spirits, it's that common thread that we have, right? That connection that we've got that is always intended to be. So I don't want to take all my time here talking about this because if I answer some questions, which is so important, and I'm I really want to do that uh, so that you are taking something away today that really personally uh, is answering a question that you have as well. So Christine, do we have anything else? Yes, we have a few. Um, this first one came in from Jackie and there's a similar one also that may help. Um, uh, there's another person here, uh, Sabina, I believe, uh, also asked the same question, but let me just back up here. It says, can a soul plan to pass over at a young age and come back to the same parents as another child to, con to continue her soul plan? And the one that is also, well, there's no name on this one. Can my little boy in spirit come back to guide me if he gets reincarnated? 
So well, those are kind of along okay. the same lines. First of all, let me just with the second one, if and I said this a little bit earlier, if, if I know that if my son Scott got reincarnated, if he reincarnated, I know that his spirit would always remain in spirit. He will always be Scott. He won't be Scott in the next lifetime. He could be Jennifer, right? In another lifetime. But Scott in this lifetime, his spirit will always be in spirit available. So if a child reincarnates, um, they will always be available to us still as that child we knew. So we do not have to worry about them not being there or not answering. But I have to admit that when they do not answer and you might be in a really traumatic place, desperate to hear from them and they're not answering you, they also know that your soul plan says, mom, dad, sister, brother, you need to work on this. You need to know that you have a lot of work to do as well. And I, I'm not going to come in, in every single time you call and meet you in a place that I know you need to take some, you, you have some lessons that you need to find answers to on your own. And now you have many sources to do that with. So if they're not coming to you, it's not like they're gone. I mean, I could have months at a time, months when I wasn't hearing from Scott. I didn't know enough. I mean, I didn't know nearly as much as you do now, but he always came back. And he's so present in my life now, it's 100% presence that I never could have imagined. So do not worry about that. That if they reincarnate, we may never know. Don't even worry about that because they will be present to you in this lifetime until you meet up with them again, okay? The, the other one was, can you kind of refresh me? Yeah, I think that they were both uh, pretty similar. Okay. Um, I, I think that that would answer Jackie's question as well. Okay. And the next question is from Donna. She said, Sarah, I've recently heard that our soul chooses exactly when it's going to exit, where and with whom, if anyone. Can I get your thoughts on this, please? I agree with that. There, we're not meant to know, but... There are times when people, I just saw um, something on the chat room, there are times when the soul peeks through and uh, it intentionally to let want someone feel that they were not going to be here for long. Or sometimes even a mother who gives birth to a baby, I've read this or heard this, saw her baby and thought she's not going to be here for long. I'm not going to have her for long. What came, what, what kind of voice or what feeling would bring that? It could only be the soul. And so those kinds of things that seep into our thinking can come from, do come from our soul. And, but the beauty of that is spirit is not going to have you const, like constantly think, is it today? Is it today? Is it today? Because we get engaged with life and we move on. And it's just a thought that came in that you might never forget. Like I think it was 40 years old that your son had said, he thought he wouldn't live to that age or beyond that. He, there was something in his soul speaking. Yes. And you are also meant to know. If you heard it, if, you, if he told you, you are meant to know that. I never had any, any indication from Scott. He died suddenly in a national park a thousand miles from home in his sleep. And I never saw him again. So I had no, I had no thoughts that anything would happen to him. And we let him go for the summer between his freshman and sophomore years of college. And, uh, but those, those messages that can come from the soul, you have to almost wait to see how it plays out in, in our actual human life, in our human experience. But yes, I do believe that that happens. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Jackie said that no, that her question was a little bit different. So I'm go just going to repeat that mm -hmm. really quick here. Um, can a soul plan to pass over at a young age and come back to the same parents as another child to continue her soul plan? Anything is possible. Anything is possible. I, you know, I've not heard of that myself, but what spirit is giving me, anything is possible. So it, it, it would not be the same. It's a different, now it's a different child, right? Because once you, once we leave our body as whatever like if the child's name was Mary, that first child comes back as um, Jonah, 
then that is a whole other spirit coming through. You see a whole other soul is starting a new lifetime. So it's not going to follow exactly the same, but there may be some parts of that they're telling me that you would recognize that uh, definitely would show you that that child has come back again. So it's possible. Thank you, Sarah. Hopefully that helps Jackie. Um, and I know that there was a question a little bit earlier from Irene and she was wondering, um, she still does not, uh, she's not sure of the difference between spirit and soul. Would our spirit come with us in the next life? Our spirit stays in spirit. At the next lifetime, we come in as a different person. We could be in another country. Uh, we could be, if we're female now, we, could, we would be male. So each lifetime is going to be spirit of, let's say, Sarah and Scott. Um, next life, lifetime, two different spirits, but the soul holds on to all those people we've been. Do you see? The spirit is the individual, the human that we knew, the name that we know, that we love. Uh, yes. So kind of, I hope that that explains that. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. And Darla is asking, my son always told me that he was going to die young and not make it to 40. Did his soul know that he was going to have a short life? Yes. Yes. So if it happened, it was always going to happen. And that, that, that kind of, that allows you to know that the soul plan was working in order for you to believe that there's something more always going on and to not think that his life was cut short at 40 um, it, unintentionally. It is pretty intentional what spirit does. We all have so much meaning and purpose in this life, but we come to serve that purpose, to expand and to grow and to be within the family and all the parts in, that are needed there. And yet to trust that when we leave, it was the time that we were meant to leave. Because when they leave, they're that much more accessible to us in a way on the other side for us to become more aware. Think about this, what you're learning now, you would never have learned if your child was sitting right next to you, which was what we all want, right? But under the circumstances which we cannot change and they could not change because it was so planned. You're becoming a new person in ways that you may not like right now, but give it time, but you're becoming much more aware you are growing in ways you never would have if this hadn't happened. We knew that in spirit. Each of us knew that in spirit when we planned this lifetime with our child or children, that they would leave before us. And chances are very great that we've left them in lifetimes before they were ready for us to go. There's always that time period and everything that's changing from lifetime to lifetime. So when we know we will see them again, no doubt, we will come back into another life with them, no doubt. It will be a different lifetime. It will be a different era, most likely. And yet there's always that connection that we have, that we travel together lifetime to lifetime. I hope that that helps you understand that a little bit more. I know I'm getting kind of repetitive at times, but I think the more you hear it, maybe the more you can take it in. I do want to bring out another question that I've had before from someone that says, so can you veer from your soul plan? You know, can you just say, I don't like the direction I'm going. I don't like this. I'm going to move to another country. I, you know, I'm going to just change up my, my life in ways because I don't like this, what I'm doing right now. Um, that was always meant to be. The soul plan is never going to be amended by human <laughs> changed because you don't like it. It doesn't feel comfortable. If you're meant to move to Montana or Mexico or Ireland or wherever, it was always meant to be. Always meant to be. So we'll all go exactly where we're meant to go. We'll be with who we're meant to be with. And it will all be soul planned exactly as we planned it. And we will go back to spirit and we will know we accomplished everything we came for. So the growth that you have now, 
which you never expected to have, I didn't either, that you don't really want, but in time you will see, I think, appreciate it more than you can. And maybe you do now, which I do hope that you can, was always meant to be for this lifetime for each of us. Okay. I Thank see, you, Sarah. yeah, Sherry has a question. Yes, um, Sherry's question is, if spirit is love, how do you explain evil people? Does a soul plan, uh, let's see here, does a soul plan to be a bad person? So um, I think that also came up earlier. I did see um, another question that was similar to that as well. So if you can speak to that, Sarah. Yes, okay, <clears throat> good question. Because spirit works in contrast. We're seeing contrast in Ukraine right now with Russia and Ukraine. Um, spirit works in contrast all the time. So we have good and evil is right, is, as you asked Sherry. Um, someone would come in to be the contrast for others to see themselves what they don't want to be or what they um, will avoid or what they will learn not to be, basically, again. So anyone that's done anything that has been considered evil, wrong, they have come in for whatever their work is needed in this lifetime, but they're creating a contrast in something that, and you look back in history, you look back in history, there have been people always that have been the contrast. There, there are always somebody there that creates havoc or death or, um, you know, terrible things. So they have come in to be that contrast because contrast then creates the opposite of goodness or, you know, um, greater love or changing someone's life. Maybe somebody is hanging out with a contrast guy and then decides, I can't do this anymore. There's something in me that says, pull away from him. And so they move away and they see themselves they see the mirror of what they could have been, but they have gone on to be different. So the contrast person comes in with meaning and purpose as well. It is so planned. And whatever havoc that they create creates a lot of experiences for other people. But there's always, when you look at situations, you look to see for the good that's also come out of this or the learning or the growth. Um, you see what a mother becomes when her her child has, has died. Um, the mother, I said this before, the mother who began Mothers Against Drunk Driving back in the 90s, she was my inspiration because she was doing something in memory of her child. She wanted to change the world. How many moms and dads have changed the world in ways? Look at Elizabeth. She got this knowing that she wanted to have a group like this. And look at how many lives she's changing because of what happened. Now her son Morgan was a contrast, not in an evil way, but we look at any kind of contrast and says it's going to change other people's lives. And so other people will see that, you know, straighten up their life. They may join them for a while, or they may go down that path and that was always intentional as well. So whatever was planned, whether it was drugs, whether it was addiction, it was planned. And I wanna take that and put that out here too, because so many of you have experienced that, not you, but a lot of moms and dads, that it, it's so difficult to understand why would someone plan that? What their experiences were, they are learning from that as well. They see themselves in spirit now, they see the whole big picture. And they know that what they created is also creating the opposite in you, in their friends shifting lives here in the body and even while they were here. And so the hardest parts in life are sometimes so hard to understand. And yet when we look at what can come from that, that can be meaningful and purposeful from the contrast person or the contrast life, there's meaning to all of that. We'll have to go back to that. And if you can't grasp it all tonight, just stick it in that you know, a pocket of yours that says somehow this has meaning and I don't understand it all yet, but it does have meaning. And you will 
in time. Not You won't get it all. We're not going to get all the answers while we're here. So we might as well just give up on that part. But you'll get what you need, what you came here for, and what is going to be purposeful and helpful and also confusing for you. But if it's confusing, as humans, what do we do? We try and figure that out. And there you go. Are you going on another path? Is it taking you someplace else? You're going to meet some other people. Yeah. It's always got meaning. So good and evil. Evil has meaning and purpose as well. And really, they're a spirit that came into a body. So the evil was just in this body. We'll call it evil. In this body, they go back to spirit. They are whole again. They see what they created. They will come back to balance that because spirit works in contrast and spirit works in balance. And you'll hear that a lot about balance. Um, they will come back and will they pay the price for that? Will they be the opposite of what they were before in another lifetime in order to grow from these lifetimes. We are connecting lifetime to lifetime ourselves with who we've been and what we need in this lifetime. I know I've been quiet in past lifetimes, but I know I've been a spiritual seeker in past lifetimes. And I wasn't able to speak up in past lifetimes. This lifetime, wow, I've been put out there in ways I never thought. They've given me, spirits given me information they have said, get out there. You are, you are healing that past life where you were killed because you tried to tell people what you were hearing from spirit. And here I am able to talk to you tonight knowing I'm as safe as can be and talk to others on the street and know I'm safe because it's a time, a new era of not having to fear, you know, keeping my mouth shut. I did that earlier, but you know, now I know that my journey is meant to be one of expressing spirituality and the soul plan and you know who I am now in ways that I couldn't in past lives. So we all are utilizing this lifetime and even past lifetimes that we don't really even know about. Um, allow that to come through in you and embrace it in ways that you can and see yourself in cl with clarity. It will come, it will come. Oh, it's nine o'clock. Do we have another couple of questions? Because I, I hate to just kind of, uh, I don't have to leave at nine o'clock by any means. Uh, just one last question. Jackie was asking if they can communicate through dreams as well. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yes. Um, dreams are amazing. And I know that we're all trying to get them and, and make them happen. And um, yet I my dreams came from Scott before I even really knew what could happen, but I knew sometimes I'd wake up and I knew I saw him, but I couldn't remember the dream. That's happened to me. And then um, I had amazing dreams where he was walking down the street on one side of the road on a sidewalk and he was going down the hill and I was going up and we're passing. And it's like, so I'm yelling to him, Scott, you know, Scott. And he finally turned around and he goes, yeah, hi, mom, I heard you. And he walked across the street and gave me a hug. Um, dreams can be so powerful and they are a connector that spirit can bring. I wasn't one that could make them happen. And I wasn't one that, um, you know, I tried putting the pen and paper by the table. I would drink water, whatever you're supposed to do in different ways. Just didn't happen. Mine has evolved organically, I guess, because um, I didn't know enough to tap into how you do that. And I just know that it can come without even having to have all of the classes that um, I might have taken. So if you miss a class on something, know it'll come back in another way for you to get what you need from that. So dreams, yes, embrace them. Uh, when they come, write them down. They're amazing in ways. Uh, I have a friend that also does dream interpretation that's amazing to see the depth of them sometimes. So. Um, there are people out there like that as well. I'm glad you're having dreams. I see some of the comments. Anyone else? Anything? Uh, looks like one more question. If you do, if you just want to make this the last one, and sure. if you have any other questions, if we missed anything, um, Sarah will look through the chat and address those next week. Okay. Yes. Okay, so the last question is from Darla. I understand that choosing to come back into this life as an addict is one of the hardest lives you can choose. Is that correct? Definitely hard. Definitely hard. Um, 
lots of uh, reflection when they get back to spirit. I also want to tell you that I don't get that we have a life review like a lot of people think. What I get is that we're following a soul plan that is taking us exactly where we need to go. Therefore, when we get back to spirit and we've completed our life, we do not have to pay penance. We do not have to go to the hospital and be fixed up before we can enter spirit or anything like that. We are whole when we leave our body. We are one with spirit. We are one with God. And so um, to have a, an experience of addiction or something like that is to also be able to know you as moms and dads, siblings, to know that when that child left after all of this tough life, tough experience for everyone involved. I, I read, I know, I'm sorry. And yet it was very, very purposeful for your child and for you as parents. Um, I did not experience that, but I know for a fact that it's the only way spirit works, that that which you come here for, soul planned addiction in any way that that is, is also going to be profoundly meaningful, only to be found maybe in spirit in, in the future, um, discovered in there, but you will come back again with that. Your child that left that way, whole, just like any, anything connected, if, if drugs or if it's suicide, they are whole, they know what happened, they know why they came, they know the path you're gonna take now, they're gonna be present with that in ways I hope that, that you can take that in in ways and you might need to hear it a hundred times, but I will, you know, I will always tell you that. Exactly. That was your soul plan. That was their soul plan. All those experiences were to um, teach them that um, life is hard. And you know, uh, in any lifetime like that, all that goes into that, that is so challenging. And yet it's got meaning. It's got meaning. So I wanna explain for next week. I do hope um, that you will come back because we will go into this more deeply and answer more questions. I have a bunch of more questions that I can answer as well. And um, as Christine's writing, I'm so glad that you came. Come back again, it won't be exactly the same because there'll be some new people come in, I'm sure. But to know that um, this isn't something you can learn one night. This is something that continues. I also want you to know that I have a blog that I haven't written in two years, but Scott made me write um, called Spirit Teaches at my website or on my website, spiritteaches.org, where I have um, blogs called Spirit Teaches that were channeled by Scott to me on the page. He uses my experiences, but it explains even more about the soul planning. So in between now and then, if you have time to read through some of those, even my blogs that are on death teaches the same thing, there's a lot of information there. Um, spiritteaches.org. Just more information to help you see with a little more clarity, a little more hope, and a little more healing. So I'm so glad you came tonight. Thank you all so much. And um, I hope to see you next week. If you have questions, again, write them down, even send them to me, Spirit Sarah, <clears throat> Sarah at Spirit Teaches. Um, this recording will go on to YouTube so you can look at it again if anybody wants to see it and we will continue our talk on soul planning. Thank you everyone. Thank you very Thank much. You. Good, Good night. You. Thank you. Thank much you. love. Good night. <laughs> Good night everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Bye. All right.